So down here cleaning up. I've got the engine pulled out of the outback here. Stripped everything off of it that I'm gonna need. That's the old engine. Uh, it's pretty much a nasty mess. Uh, here's the two liter. And basically, in a nutshell, what you're gonna need is these items here. So that's the entire intake and injectors and wire and harness fuel system which is really convenient on a Subaru because it's all made into one assembly you can separate it all if you'd like but it just makes it really easy just to pull off uh, the reason you gotta swap all this over is your crank sprocket the little tabs on the back of it they're different than the 2 liter And so are the little notches on the back of your cam sprocket. The harmonic balancer is also different as compared to that. I'm sure it would work on this engine, but I'm just going to swap the two fives over anyway. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if you need to use the sensors off the two five, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, the two liters intake system is drive by wire. And there are some subtle differences between the 2.0 and the 2.5, but that's certainly not gonna work in this outback. So essentially you have to swap the 2.5's intake and all of that over to make it work. Now this engine I picked up from the little JDM depot in the last video. Uh, it's it's alright, you know, it's not leaky or anything, but I did find a unique issue that I'm going to have to address before I decide to put this engine into service. Let's see if I can get some light into it. Probably a little bit tough to see. I don't know if you can see the right side intake valve. It's got a little bit of rust on it. Like there had been water on the inside. And this the same back here on this other side too. Uh, it's really hard to see on video, but... At any rate, I had to think about what I was going to do to clean all that out. Because I definitely don't want to put this engine into service with it like that. Um, and I think the reason it's like that is they probably got the engine in out of the container and either the salt in the air from the ocean got to that or it's from where... Um, they pressure wash the engine after they received it, which I don't understand why they do that. But, and I really wish they would have just sold the engine like this without the intake on it. So that way they could pull the intake off and see that it's got that issue or don't pressure wash it or anything like that. Um, anyway, so I started thinking around, you know, how can I clean that up without pulling the head off because I really don't want to do that. I know the gaskets aren't blown. It's not leaking oil. It's not doing any of the typical uh, things that a Subaru would do when your gaskets blow on the single cams. It's not leaking oil like that. So uh, I think I'm going to try to do a walnut blast. And for me, that's just an excuse to go and buy more crap. So Today I'll probably try to run down to Harbor Freight and get a little portable blast, media blaster and some walnut shell. And I'll rotate the engine to where intake valves are closed, turn it on its side, blast one at a time.
and hopefully that'll clean it up enough to where it looks good enough to where I think and I feel that it'll do just fine. Uh, before, before I do that, I'll probably go ahead and pull the oil pan because I could probably use the 2 liters oil pan, but I'd rather use the 2.5. That way the oil capacity stays the same as the 2.5 and there's no confusion. Um, I guess other than that, the differences I've seen on this engine are the PCB system is a little different. It uses two hoses rather than one, so I'll have to figure out something with that, which that's the 2.5. That's just one, one hose coming out. I'm wondering if the uh, threaded insert here is the same size as the two liters. I may pull it out and see. Um, I'll have to take the water neck, which I've already removed from the engine, and swap over. It's angled a little differently right here. Uh, air conditioner bracket's different. Um, this one uses three bolts. That one uses four. And I'm planning to use the AC compressor that the car came with. Uh, the bracket back here for the wiring loom is different too, but that'll just swap right over. So, um, I haven't pulled the timing cover obviously, so we'll, we'll get to that here shortly. The lower radiator hose and water pump are different on this engine. It'll bolt up the same. It's just, it's set up differently. But that's going to get replaced when the rest of my parts arrive. So as far as right now, the only thing I'm really planning to do is a timing belt. Which I'm bringing in the ASIN kit. Uh, I was going to originally just try to see if you know any of the components were any good and reuse. But I really don't feel comfortable doing that. And my situation changed. Like I originally just bought this car to try to flip but we were meant to inherit a Lexus from my wife's late grandfather, and that didn't happen. Uh, the car ended up needing more work than it was worth, and we have a brand new baby, and we need something that's bigger than her little Honda Civic to tote him around in. Uh, so this is going to be our family hauler now. So I want to make sure this car is as right as it can possibly be. So... We're going to try this walnut thing. It'll probably clean them up really, really well, which will be good for efficiency. And um, One thing I didn't mention is this engine, I had them compression tests right in front of me before I took it home. And it, it ran between 150 and 180 on all cylinders. So that's pretty good for being cold. If it were to be running and get warm, you know, up to, top, up to operating temperature, I would imagine it would be higher than that. Um, anyway, I digress. It was, it was enough for me to be satisfied. So, um, yeah, I'm a little disappointed by there being some rust on the intake valves, but nothing stuck. I rotated the engine and because it has good compression, I'm, I'm going to try to just clean that out as best as I can and put it together and send it.